Hello guys and welcome to another Pro Guides video. Today we're going to be looking at the Duo Gauntlet Cup win with Nick Merckx. In this game, his teammate Neoli dies and he has to play the late game by himself. Despite being solo, he still manages to hold an advantage over his opponents throughout the match. But that's not all. Nick Merckx also scores several kills and, with a few smart, patient plays, secures the win for himself and his duo partner. Hopefully you guys can apply some of these strategies to improve your own gameplay and, most importantly, get some of those clutch Fortnite wins yourself. There's a lot to cover, so let's hop right in. In this late game moment, Nick and his partner arrive in Tilted and begin to set up a base on the high ground where they're likely going to catch some players coming into the zone. By doing this, they can get some easy kills. These are both aggressive players, so this strategy comes as no surprise. They aren't likely to get favored here for the next circle, but they have their ballers handy so they can rotate without using much materials anyways. Neo spots a duo rotating in as they likely expected and immediately gets a really nice heavy sniper tag. Then they close in for the kill. Neoli uses his stink bombs to pressure his opponents and prevents them from healing. This time, Nick instinctively chooses the side opposite of Neoli to attack from, since two angles are harder to cover than one. They quickly overwhelm the two players and then secure the kills. Nick Merckx's opponent ends up dropping two Rift to Goes, which is a very powerful item to have in these high-end competitive Fortnite games. It allows them to make the decision to give up their ballers and instead set up for kills in the next circle. All right, let's get into the next clip. Nick and his duo partner launch pad into the safe zone and set up in one by ones at mid-level height. There are opponents crawling all over the high ground up from the hill above them, so they close their one by ones with roofs and simply look to land some shots with some wall edits. As they look for shots to land, one team behind them starts grenade launching their base. Unfortunately, Nick's oh God, duo partner, Neoli, ends up yeah, getting knocked out by it. Nick does his best to save his teammate here, but there's simply nothing he can do versus a grenade launcher and a hail of bullets being fired at them. Neoli dies. Nick takes a bunch of damage as well, so he pops one of his rifts in order to get away. He jukes his opponents by skydiving away from them. This seems to work since they stop shooting, allowing them to float back to Neoli's loot in the edge of the next safe zone. That spot is just too good not to land at again. Now let's pause here, because there's a really quick lesson we want to go over. One, don't tunnel vision. You need to be conscious of as many opponents as you can during these late game scenarios. Neoli's opponents were firing that grenade launcher at other players long before he died to it, so he definitely should have seen it coming. Two, higher build sensitivity on controller. Now this is a tip mainly for the controller players out there. I'd like to point out that Nick wouldn't be able to build like this if his sensitivity was set to normal. So it's a good idea to set your build sensitivity to something higher than you generally have, since speed is really important when building. Number three, don't be greedy when holding on to your rifts. It's important to know when to pop a rift earlier than planned. We saw a rift save Nick's life in this scenario, so when properly used, they can almost end up being a get out of jail free card. It may be an early use of a rift, but it's better to use it and live rather than just die. Okay, let's get back into the game. Nick builds up a bit higher to be in a better position because he wants to start looking for kills. Right here, I'd like to point out a smart move he makes with the grenade launcher that I don't see many players do when trying to hit long range shots. Nick fires one grenade off in order to gauge the firing angle needed to hit his opponents. He sees where the grenade lands, and based off that, he can adjust his shot if needed, and then fire more. His strategy ends up working, and he ends up hitting someone with his grenade. This trick can be helpful because if you do miss, you only waste one ammo instead of up to six. We all know how hard explosive ammo is to come by these days. Nick has noticed by now that the storm is moving in his favor. The zone being in your favor like this can definitely be one of the best ways to get late game kills. And you're about to see that happen in a second. Nick puts up two quick kills with his rifle and then notices a rift getting popped down to his left. He heads straight for it, saving time by shooting the wall instead of waiting to use his pickaxe, only taking a tick of storm damage. In the late game, you generally want to use every rift and launch pad you see available as this allows you to conserve materials, and materials are super important on the last couple circles. So Nick lands while some of the opponents are still running in and notices there is no high ground established by anyone yet. 
High ground is usually the best option for these games. That's because you guys get focused on less, you have the better angles, you have a place to drop down if you need to. High ground is king. So here he builds up in order to secure the high ground, and now just look at his awareness. He's looking up, he's looking to his right, he's looking to his left, all over. He's making sure no one is trying to contest him while he gets these kills here. You guys should be doing the same as well. Nick gets another storm in his favor, but if it wasn't, he'd probably use the rift he saved by jumping into another opponent's rift earlier. I feel bad for his opponents here. He's absolutely just tearing them apart. Quick kill, some damage done, and he doesn't even want to use his rift yet. He doesn't need to since his position is prime here. He's not receiving any of the focus and he can let off shots below him if he wants. The only real issue is material conservation, which his teammate points out to him. But it doesn't matter. Players are dropping like flies and eventually there's only three remaining. Nick even sees one of them and smartly decides not to engage. Instead, he lets the teams fight each other. Things could definitely get ugly for Nick if he decides to give up his high ground to engage on his opponents, especially in a top three scenario where you won't have much time to reset before the next fight. His patience proves to work quite well as Nick has no problem swooping in and picking up the win. While Nick Lurks generally isn't known for his late game plays, he definitely made a lot of correct choices in this game that helped secure him a dub and a bunch of Gauntlet Cup points. Hopefully you guys learned a bunch from this video. And if you're interested in videos like these and courses with the best players in the world, please check out ProGuides.com where you can also get a 24-7 coach and a bunch of information to help you guys get better at Fortnite. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck in your next games.